Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny transforming, and destiny impacting word of God today. Yes, because in Kingdom Light Church, you shall know the truth, and the truth will always set you free. Now, let's get into the word that will bring light to your life. God bless you. Hallelujah. That you're too faithful to me. As I come into your presence, we pass past the gates of praise into your sanctuary to stand in face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the full. Merciful. 
This words began to come out of my mouth, and the Lord remembered Sarah, and the Lord remembered Sarah, and I began to pray, and I began to pray, and the Lord began to take me through different characters in the Bible that the Bible indicated, and the Lord remembered them and the Lord remembered Rachel and the Lord remembered Noah and the Lord remembered Daniel can you tell him if there is something that looks like he has forgotten in your life can you ask him Lord it looks like you remember other people. It looks like my case has been forgotten. It looks like my family has been forgotten. It looks like you're not aware that this sickness is still there. It looks like you're not aware that my children... It looks like you're not aware. Can you remember me? The Bible says, and the Lord remembered Noah. And when he remembered Noah, he opened the ark. Oh, Noah has been wandering about for a long time. He was wandering. The flood was carrying Noah in the ark. He was in the ark that God prepared. God told him to prepare the ark. God told him to go into the ark. And Noah was in the ark. And it looks like Noah was stuck there. And the Lord remembered Noah. Can you ask him this morning, Lord, can you remember me? Aina Hajevala. Aina Mambru de Baga Hule Brinanga Losu de Magalitata. Can you mean it? Can you mean it? Can you mean it? Lord, remember me. Just remember me. Hallelujah. Oh, Jengre Balabaya. In the name of Jesus Christ. They came to Hezekiah and there was a death sentence. And Hezekiah was, <clears throat> it was determined that Hezekiah was going to die. And then uh, Hezekiah went to the Lord. He said, Lord, remember. That's why we seek that you stay committed because days will come when you will have to tell the Lord, remember how I have served you. Remember, remember, remember. Do you have anything in your life that you can say to the Lord, Lord, because of this, can you remember? Just remember, remember. Remember my commitment to you. Remember the prayers I have prayed. Remember my sacrifices. Oh, Father, remember. Is someone praying? Remember the sleepless night. Remember that one night that I was so, so, so stressed out and I kept crying. Remember that night that it was not convenient. I still got up and prayed. It wasn't convenient as he came to church. Father, remember. And the Lord remember Job and the Lord remember oh father remember me remember me ayo sheleva to seven kaila jelevo de vesu te brediala father remember me in the name of Jesus Christ i'm so glad 
based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the Lord. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the Lord. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the Listen, when it's season, I'm going to teach on prayer again today. I want you to understand that you must have wisdom to talk to the God of all wisdom. God is so compassionate that he would even listen to a counsel from a man. It looked as if God didn't think when he was overwhelmed with anger and he was going to kill the entire children of Israel and so that now it would have been the children of Moses. And Moses went to God in prayer and says, Lord, you know, people will laugh at you. Do you have a situation in your life that you know that you have stood with God's way? And if God doesn't answer, you know that if you tell God that, he will respond to you. Do you understand that? You know, there's a level of loyalty to God that will make you say that. There's a level of commitment to God that will make you say, Lord, you know, I had other options. I didn't take it. And I went your way. If you don't do this, it's not me they're going to laugh at. It's you they're going to laugh at. And God listened to Moses. <laughs> Amen? Moses prayed that kind of prayer. I'm trying to get you to know you must have wisdom to get to the heart of God. And you must understand that if something you have been doing is not working, don't try to change God since he can't change. Maybe it's you that needs to change. Maybe it's me that needs to change. Maybe it's my method that needs to change. Maybe it's my approach that needs to change. Do you understand that? You can't change God. I can't change God. So if I keep praying a particular way, if I keep treating God in a particular way, and I'm not getting the answer, it doesn't matter how sincere I am. You can be sincerely wrong. Amen? So we get to the place where we learn how to change. Father, remember us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray one more prayer. I lay down about 5.30 in the morning and uh, it's been a while since I have this kind of a dream and usually when I have those kind of dreams I know what will happen. It will take prayer to avert it. I was telling Zoe on our way to church this morning, the dream. I had a dream, and I can't count how many airplanes were falling off the sky. And there was fire everywhere. Amen. You know, the church is very, very immature that we are just concerned about what our jobs can give to us, what our education can give to us. When we are in the kingdom, we must stretch beyond the surface to knowing what the kingdom, what counts in the kingdom. Yeah, that's what makes Christianity sweet, actually, because there are many things that 
unbelievers have, I keep saying that over and over and over, uh, that you don't really, you don't really, they don't need God, they are getting it. So what, what, I mean, that's just the truth. I hope you know that. So we're going to pray for exemption. Whatever evil, trouble, calamity will hit the United States, let me be exempted. Amen? Can you ask God? Exempt my family. Exempt my children. Exempt my family. Father, you have revealed. Father, help me. De usele vajodela. Exempt Kingdom Light Church members. Exempt our families, oh God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every member of this congregation. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, exemption, exemption, exemption for every family under the sound of my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I cry for exemption. For the Bible says a thousand may fall on our side and ten thousand on our right hand side. It will not come near us. It says only with our eyes we will see the reward of the wicked. Father, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be a mark of a touch not upon every kingdom like church member. From the youngest to the oldest, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now that you've heard that, I need you to keep praying, okay? Amen. Don't stop praying. Every time you pray, put it in your prayer, and uh, God will surely answer us. Amen. Second Peter, put your hands together for verses of life. Thank you. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Second Peter chapter 3. I'm going to keep this announcement for after. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Raise me up a little bit, uh, media, please. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Are we there? New King James. Let's read together. We're reading verse 8 and 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. It says we shouldn't forget. So let's read it again so it can stick. Amen. It said this one thing. You, you are permitted to forget a lot of things. But if you are dealing with God, don't forget this one thing. Together. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day verse 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise since one day is like a thousand years if he has not done it when you've counted to 900 years to him, he's still like, he's not even up to a day yet. Why are you complaining? Does that make sense? <laughs> he just wanted you to know. Don't forget this. So don't, don't be in a hurry to say God didn't hear me. Because at least if someone promises you something, you should be able to wait for one day. Is that not true? If someone promises you something, shouldn't you be able to wait for one day? I mean, one day is not too much. But he says he is on one day. All right. Verse 8. The Lord is, verse 9. The Lord is not slack. So don't think he's just slack concerning his promise. As some people count slackness. But what? Is long suffering towards us this is my emphasis today not willing that any should perish but that all 
should come to repentance. In the context of what we want to share today, my subject today is God's prayer request. God's prayer request. Father, help us today in Jesus' name. You may be seated. In the context of where we just read now, it, it reveals that God is saying, as we learn further today, when you are praying for somebody to be born again, keep in mind that God is not slack. Keep in mind that God does not want that person to go to hell. So if you have been praying for the person to give their life or to commit it to God, and they are not yielding, you don't give up because God says, I have a thousand years to extend for that person to give their life. Is that making sense? I'm not slack. Why? It is not my will that anyone should perish. So when you understand this nature in God, you shouldn't quickly give up when you are praying as far as someone's salvation because that will be the aspect of prayer we'll be looking into. But you know, last week we began from Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13. Put that up for us, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13. It says, when I shut up the heavens, this is God speaking, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts, that means God can talk to locusts. Amen? <laughs> Everything you see, God can talk to them. You see, when I command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, he says, if my people if my people. And last week we said God told us, or he, the Bible used the word if because it is possible for us to be stuck with doing something even though we know it's not working. Don't be stuck with what is not working when God has given us a, uh, a prescription of what to do when there is trouble. Don't be bent on a lawyer. Don't be bent on a job. When God is telling you there is something else that I want you to do to produce the answers you need. Don't be bent on that medical report or doctors because they have been reading you of your finances and nothing is changing. Why are you not thinking that, no, I need to turn around? It is possible to keep Believing something that is not producing any result because the enemy would have blinded your mind and you know it's not working. It says, if my people will humble themselves. It is important for one to get to where I'm able to humble myself knowing that the route I am going because no matter how fast, no matter how sincere, no matter how aggressive, no matter the speed I am pushing in the wrong direction, I will not arrive there. <laughs> Amen? So the best thing is to hold up, Lord, why is my heaven shut up? Why is this thing not working? It looks like it's working for other people, but how come in my case it's not working? God is saying to you, you might be stuck with a wrong procedure, a wrong process, a wrong method. Can you reverse? That is what repentance means. Repentance is not saying, I am sorry, and you keep doing what you have been doing. Repentance is to turn. And when you turn, you will see the result. I believe God we help somebody to change their mind and say, no, if the Bible says, if I pray, something will happen, then I will do it. Amen? Now, if 
the feedback from what you're doing does not correspond with what God says will happen. Please check your actions. Amen? The Bible tells us that God is a loving God. Is that right? Now, if what is happening to you from God does not look like what love is, knowing that God cannot lie, is it possible that there are things you are not doing to experience that love? Do you understand that? You see, it is only in Christianity that sometimes we don't actually use our mind to sit back and think. Meanwhile, you are dealing with a God. Somebody sent me a picture. They were traveling. They sent me a picture while they were up in the sky. And if you see the beauty, the beauty, the artistic design of the sky, do you think that an intelligent being who created that, when he even told you, come and let us reason together? Amen? I'm saying, if my people who are called by my name, what process am I engaged in and it's not producing my desired result, and yet I am stuck with it. Apostle Paul said, who has bewitched you? Have you begun in the spirit, and you want to perfect it in the flesh? You started your business in the spirit. You started your marriage in the spirit. You started your family in the spirit. Who has bewitched you that now you are looking for a solution from a different means? It says witchcraft. When I keep going the route that is different from where or the route where I started from, you cannot start in the spirit and expect it to be perfected by any other means. No. Before the enemy uses you as a testimony for other believers to falter in their walk with God. Can you, since we know you to be a Christian for a long time, stop that route? Because it is easy for the devil to use you as a reference to a new believer and say, don't you see that pastor? Don't you see that sister? Don't you see that brother that has been going to church for a long time and yet their marriage is not working? They have been going to church for a long time and still they are cursing. They have been going to church for a long time and they have no change in their attitude, their responses, their behavior. Don't let the devil use you as a testimony or a reference to destroy other people's faith. If you are believing God for healing, stay with God. If you are believing God for deliverance, stay with God. So that we can say, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of your own testimony. Your testimony will be the next that somebody will use in order to gain victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to be to God. So when you are believing God, know that some of us are waiting for you to break through so we can tell God, God, you did this for that brother. Devil, if this sister broke through, I will also break through. Because we are supposed to use our testimony as a weapon. Amen? Last week, we mentioned that God gave a prescription in James chapter 3. He said, is anyone suffering? Let them pray. You are a believer. You are suffering. Is it prayer that you first approach? Or what are you doing? He says, if anyone is suffering amongst you, this is the answer. Let him pray. Is anyone afflicted? Let them pray. Glory be to God. Something will change in your life. I, I need you to make up your mind. No, Satan, I refuse to buy into your deception. Glory be to God. I've been on this path for a long time now. Nothing has changed. I refuse to keep going this direction and expecting the Bible. You know, well, it's not the Bible. They say if you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome, that's insanity. Amen? Are you still here? 
So last week we talked about the hours of prayer. We mentioned the best time to pray. And how many of you remember the answer to the best time to pray? Always. And they always falls into how many categories? Three. Three, right? All right. First one is what? Uh-huh. No. The first in the category of three. We're supposed to pray always, and the always is three times, right? And in the three times we said we have in the <laughs> okay. I hope I'm trying to phrase the question very well. The first category has three points in it. So what is the first one? Which means if you are answering the first one, you should give me three different times of prayer. All right, good. So we have any time from 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., right? And then we have what? We have the, which is represented as a third hour, right? And then we have the next one, which is the sixth hour, any time between 12 or before maybe midday, 12 noon, 1 p.m., right? Then we have what? The ninth hour. So that is the first block. And we dealt with that. We dealt with the third hour in that first block. The second item for praying always was your own scheduled time of prayer. Did we say that? And then we said the last one is when you are suffering. When something goes wrong, you should pray. And we said a lot of people, that is the one they have chosen. <laughs> Fire brigade approach. <laughs> Amen. And those ones will never grow because the only way God will hear their phone call is trouble. And because he loves you and he wants a relationship with you, he will keep that problem for a long time. Because that is the only way you will come to him. <laughs> Somebody said, not me. So today we want to look at the first block, which is we dealt with the third hour. Today we want to look at the sixth hour. I want you to understand, since we have your scheduled time of prayer, I am suggesting that Third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour is not the only hours where God will hear your prayer. I hope you understand that. Very good. So just know that uh, I'm not saying that if you don't pray the third hour, if you don't pray the sixth hour, if you don't pray the ninth hour, it means you can, God will not hear you. No. So we said the third, the sixth, and the ninth hour are scriptural allocated times of prayer. Is that right? So the sixth hour today, we want to look at that. And this sixth hour is why we target God's prayer request. Let's look at this scripture, John chapter 4. It will help us. Or maybe, we, yeah, John, no, let's go to Luke chapter 23 to give us perspective. Because you see, when you read the Bible, you look at the Bible, you have to go past the surface into the depth of it. And that is why there are many things we see in the Old Testament which foreshadows the New Testament. And we said one time that if you want to trace an object, if you see a shadow, there is definitely an object somewhere. Is that right? And uh, the, the, the shadow has benefits. The shadow gives you information, but not fully what you need to know. But, but it, it tells you there's a, the real thing somewhere. And so when you trace the shadow, you begin to discover in the book of Numbers, the Bible says the people complained and they were beaten. And God told Moses, I need you to make a brazen serpent and put it on the pole. And everyone that looks at that brazen serpent on the pole, whoever was beaten by a snake, they will be healed. Just look at it. 
It was a foreshadowing of Christ on the cross. Glory be to God. And it's saying that whenever Satan struck anybody, because the brazen serpent represents sin, because that was what God nailed to the cross. And because sin was nailed to the cross, if anyone look at that finished work, then sin shall no longer have dominion over you. But not just sin. Because you see, uh, for everything that happens to a man, it is a function of the bite or the stink of sin. The Bible says the stink of death is sin. Every time you sin, death has stunk you. The stink of death is sin. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. Why? Because of sin. Okay? So the foreshadowing tells us a lot. Now, look at what happened at the cross. Luke 23 and verse 39. We're looking at the sixth hour time of prayer. Why did the Old Testament saints know and learn how to pray at the sixth hour as well. Remember, we, 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 we discover that Daniel prayed three times a day. And the three times a day was the third hour prayer, the sixth hour prayer, and the ninth hour prayer, right? So what made them to be praying at those hours? It was a foreshadowing of what will happen in the New Testament. And even in the New Testament, the believers picked on those hours of prayer. And you will hear, as we probably learn next Sunday, the ninth hour was the hour that Peter and John went to the temple. It was the hour of prayer. Glory be to God. Which means that every believer, you must get to where you have your own hour of prayer. If the saints in the Bible were so meticulous to have their hour of prayer, you expect to walk with God, you also must have your own hour of prayer. So uh, Luke chapter, yeah, then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed Jesus, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Uh Uh-huh, keep going. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condemnation. And when and we we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Uh Uh-huh. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, it was about the what? The sixth hour is the hour of praying for souls to be won. Amen? This is the hour to pray for souls, family members, friends, your neighborhood. This this sixth hour was when God Jesus Christ yanked somebody from going to hell into paradise at the sixth hour. It was the hour that salvation began to come to man. Are you still here? So this event reveals something that even Jesus, he practiced it before he went to the cross. John chapter 4 now. Give me John chapter 4 and let's see how This is confirmed by when Jesus also began. For the first time in the entire Bible, Jesus never did one-on-one evangelism or showed us how to win souls except on this account. Glory be to God. Every time he would just see a fisherman, follow me and I will make you a fisher of, you know, he saw the task collector, follow me. Do you understand that? But now we are seeing, we are going to see a detailed salvation uh, skills, how to win. You know the story, right? Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus met and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. 
But he needed to. What? He, the King James said he must need. He needed. He needed to go through Samaria. This was a pull, a dragging. He, he doesn't or he shouldn't have gone that route, but he needed. It was a necessity. Meanwhile, naturally, he shouldn't go there. Because as a Jewish man, he has no dealings with the Samaritans. As a Jewish man, he shouldn't have any dealings with the Gentiles. So he didn't have to go. But there was a compelling force. And we're going to see a confirmation again that when it comes to soul winning, this sixth hour is a time in God's agenda that if anyone will spend time and say, I'm praying for men and for women and for my neighborhood and for my nation to experience salvation, you will see immediate response from God. Glory be to God. Are you still here? So let's see what happens. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there, Jesus, therefore, going, being wearied from his journey, sat down by the well. It was what? About the sixth hour. Every conversation that happened that brought that woman into the kingdom, it was the sixth hour. Are you still here? It is very, very important because, see, the reason why we are gaining revelations and insight is for us to practice it. The Bible says, and of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do, they were in command. It is important for you to know that our God is a God of times and seasons. Hallelujah. So, it is, if you know what to do at the right time to do it, in fact, there are many things, if you can just understand the timing and the season, you may not need to pray to get it. There are many things in the natural that is just alignment. It's just aligning to the right time, the, the right moment, and doing it, it will shock you. The Bible says, God makes all things beautiful, what? In his own time. There is a time when things will work out with little effort. Hallelujah. When you know the right time to do it. When you know the right time to engage. And so, let's consider this scripture. It will help us to confirm what I just told you. Acts chapter 10. Remember the sixth hour? is the hour where we advance God's kingdom in prayer. The way this society is. The way this nation is. If we are going to truly, truly be kingdom people. You can sit at home. You can kneel on your altar of prayer and drag several people into the kingdom by your prayer. Glory be to God. Are you still here? At least this one we can do. Acts chapter 10 and verse 9. Acts 10 and verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up where? On their house stop to do what? To pray, then what happened? It was about what? The sixth hour. What happened at that sixth hour? Then he became hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. What was the trance? And saw heaven open and an object like a gray sheet bound where? At the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. And it, it were all kinds of what? Four-footed animals of the earth. And these all kinds of animals, beasts, creeping things, birds of the air, it represents the Gentile nation. And it was the sixth hour. He went up to pray, and God brought a vision at that moment. It was a most compelling vision. Remember, this was the same thing that compelled Jesus to go to Samaria. He was not supposed to go. Peter was not supposed to go to Cornelius' house, the Gentile nation, because he was a Jewish man. But in order for him to go, you will, if you read this account, it will shock you how racism is so powerful that 
tribalism is so powerful that discrimination is something that people can engage in that even when we are in Christ Jesus, we need God to force us to unite with other people. Listen to me. Peter was an apostle. Walk with Jesus. And God showed him a vision to go to the house of a Gentile. He said, I am not going. When it comes to the issue of serving or winning souls, people resist God on that. People will look for us to preach and jump. God will bless you. Everything will turn around. Yes, we do that. But listen to me. This is the real deal that makes your life easy going. Because, you know, in the scriptures, if you are wise... Every time something is dear to God, he allocates a special reward for it. And those are the things that Satan fights so much. And ye shall serve the Lord, and he will bless your bread, and he will bless your water, and he will take away sickness from you. But I don't want to serve the Lord because I don't have time. So says Satan to you. But you see, there's a promise. I will take away sickness. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. No, I'm too busy. I can't serve. Satan will suggest all kinds of things because God attached those things there as a motivation so that you should do it. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. <laughs> that there might be meat in my house. And what? Prove me in this. No, it's the preachers that need my money. It's Old Testament. We are not supposed to pay tithes in the New Testament. But you see, he attached a promise. He said, it, Prove me in this if I would not open the windows of heaven. Oh, no, but I have cousins that don't have money. They're suffering. I will send their money to them. Because Satan knows. But you have to be wise. Why is God attaching special rewards concerning those issues? Because he knows Satan will tempt us. Satan will try to manipulate us. Satan will try for us not to do it, but because he knows that we are creatures that uh, enjoy motivation, he puts those, and yet, that's how you know it's the devil. That in spite of the promises attached to those responsibilities or requirements, we still don't want to do them. He that winneth soul is wise. They shall shine as stars forever and ever. And yet, winning soul is a problem. Peter saw a vision. And God told him, don't ever call what I have cleansed on common. Oh, come on, sorry. Don't call what I have cleansed. According to the scriptures, because of what Jesus Christ did, from God's perspective, those people, he has already done his part. It is us that need to get them to fulfill the natural obligation. Before Peter went to the house of Cornelius, he says they are already clean. If they, are, if they were already clean from a human perspective, then why are you sending Peter? You see that? So, in the realm of the spirit, God has already settled the deal. In the natural, we are supposed to be the foot soldier to go there. At the sixth hour, Peter got an encounter in order to go and bring people. Are you a believer that will answer the heartbeat of God? Seeing, he says, it is not my will that anyone should perish. When you get to the place where you become a believer who is going to lift up your voice every day and say, Father, let the grace of salvation arrest my loved ones. 
I can't be born again and my brother and my sister goes to hell. No. I can't be born again and my children are not born again. No. That is hatred. No matter the type of love you're expressing to anybody, if you're a believer and their soul doesn't matter to you, you are the most wicked person. Yes, because the truth is that one day, that individual will wish they never met you. Because they have been with you and you refuse to tell them. Remember the rich man? He says, please send men down to the earth. I have five brothers. These five brothers, I don't want them. Do you not know that because that man was rich, those five brothers definitely were not all cool with him. Don't you think so? Yeah, yeah. Somehow, why are you acting as if everybody in your family is cool with you? <laughs> wow. I have the most beautiful people here. Everybody in your family, you guys relate very well. You guys just kiss each other. I love you, you know, every day. Hey, do you need money? Piam, I sent to you. And then next week, they sent to you. Yeah, wow, that's good. Please pray for me. I need my family to rise to that level like that. <laughs> but I'm saying, when he got to heaven, or when he went to hell, rather, he discovered that, hey, whatever was a challenge on earth, I would rather that they come to the other side and let me be stuck here. All of a sudden, he had great love for his loved ones that because they are human, they had to have been going through some other issues. But at this point, he didn't mind. He didn't mind that he would be in hell forever and his five brothers will make it to heaven. Well, you have the chance today that you will be in heaven. Let your brothers and your friends also be in heaven. Did you understand that? You, 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 since you are not going to hell, let not be that you are the reason why other people will go to hell. Because then they will say, oh, you knew about this thing and you never told us. You, didn't, you, did, you, you made it look as if it was okay for me to play with God. There is no love for a believer expressed to anybody beside the fact that you want them to experience Christ just as you. Glory be to God. Are, are you here? It's very, very important. The Bible says to train up our children in the way that they should go. It, when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Be your brother's keeper, your sister's keeper. Learn how to bring people to the kingdom. Don't be a wife and your husband is not taking God serious and you're okay with it. Don't be a husband and your wife is not taking God serious and you're okay with it. No, that is evil. Am I so hard on you? Yes, I intend to be so. Do you understand? Because you will, you, you will be glad I push you this hard. What kind of love is that? If truly you know that there is heaven and hell, then nobody that you claim to love should you just take their salvation, their commitment to God casually. That is, if you believe that there is heaven and earth, except you just believe in religion. Well, let's go to church, you know, Kesera, Sera, and I'm not even sure. No. That's why we read the scripture that says, God is not slack. Oh, I have tried. I have tried my best. Have you tried for 1,000 years? Yeah, because it says one day, uh -huh, and I'm not slack. Glory be to God. It, it is possible that the reason why you are claiming you have tried and it's not working is because you have not proved Christianity to them. Yeah, there, there, there's something in your life that is they're wondering, I really don't want this type of, they may not tell you, but there's something you're doing or something they see that doesn't look like Christ yet. So why not use prayer since God will answer this prayer. Lord, not because of me, 
but because of you and because of that person's life. Do, do you understand that? Not because of me. No, because of you. I, I, and because of this person, I'm expressing love. And since you don't want anybody to perish, let the grace of salvation break every demonic hold out of their life. Whatever is holding them in captivity. Remember the Bible says the gospel has been preached, but the God of this world has blinded the minds of people. Can't you see that this, some of these people, they love you and you love them, and yet when it comes to the issue of God, there is a barrier. And you're wondering, what is this thing? Well, I'm telling you now, it's not normal. It's not natural. It's satanic. And prayer will break off that veil off of their minds. Glory be to God. Is somebody going to pray at that hour? When you take your break at 12, use that time. Remember somebody. God will answer you. Father, whatever is holding them down in the name of Jesus Christ, let your spirit reach out to them now in the mighty name. Let the light of salvation shine in their heart. Some of us, our heart was more hardened than the people we have given up on now. Do you understand that? Yeah, some of us. It was not even our hearts. Also. Some of us, you see, somebody was talking to me one day, uh, and I, I was relating to my father. He said, oh, he never thought of it like that. Somebody was telling me, oh, why are you writing all these books now? You are starting church here. You are doing that. I said, listen, um, the way I was so stubborn against this pastor thing, you really don't know. What is happening to me now is just an advantage of my father. There are demons that my father's service to God already broke it. Do, do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not a first generation believer. I'm not. Some of you, your children are not first generation believers. Which means that if you are born again, it was more difficult for you to be born again than your own children to be born again. Did, did you understand that? Yeah, because there are certain things. Remember the Bible says, I will visit the iniquity to the fourth generation. Well, you broke it. So it means that it should, the force of darkness should not militate over your children anymore. Are, are you still here? There are certain things that stopped with you. Glory be to God. I, am I helping somebody today? So I told him, I said, no, I'm enjoying certain graces because of what my father did already. And that is why many of you, many of you, if you're not an American like me, if you're from Africa, I want to advise you a little bit. <laughs> Let me advise you. 90% of Americans your age, they are not under that generic curse of God that visited the fourth generation. Because many of them, their great grandfather were Baptist pastors, they were Christians. They, there are many things that naturally. They, that cross expired by itself. Oh, you didn't get me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so most of the people that you relate with now, they, that cross, they didn't have to pray. It has expired. Because God put an expiry date on it. Do, do you understand that? But some of us, you still know that shrine spare it today. You know it. You know you still have a cousin and an uncle that is still going to witchcraft places. You know. That's why you can't take your prayer life. No. Even those of us who are not first generation Christians, there are things we are still dealing with. Do you understand that? Very important. 
The point is this. Don't give up on anybody because God says, I have enough time to walk to bring that person into the fold. The sixth hour is the hour to break the yoke of Satan over the lives of people. It is a time to ask God for the nation. Give me some 2 verse 8. It is a time. Remember the sixth hour when Paul, or when Peter saw the vision, it was a vision that affected the whole earth. It says the four corners of that sheet was tied up. What does that mean? Everyone is under God's siege waiting for a man to preach to them. They are already been bound. Remember, Cornelius and his entire family were already waiting. <laughs> they were already waiting. There is somebody just waiting for you to pray that prayer, and next Sunday you will see them in church. There's somebody already waiting for you to pray that prayer in your neighborhood, and somehow a, 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 a force will drag them to your door. Oh, I just missed my way. But then they see something on you. So, wow, there's something about you. Yes, I'm a believer. It is your prayer that has brought them your way. There is a way God wants to bring people to the kingdom. Look at how he answered Cornelius' prayer. And how he forced Peter to go to the place. When you pray that kind of prayer, you will see how God will insist that you must. Somebody must be born again. Did you understand that? When you pray such prayers, you will see how God will insist that that boy, that girl, that friend of yours, that sister of yours, that wife of yours, that uncle of yours, you will see how God will insist. Three times, Peter said, no, I will not. God said, "Don't no, you can't play with me like that. I invested my son, not just for you, Peter. I invested Jesus for more than you and the other disciples. Don't, your racism, uh, and uh, in this society where we are, this is a secret for us. If you have a burden for God indeed, I am teaching you what you should do. That when you take your break, can you pray for the church? Father, bring as many as need to be saved to Kingdom Light Church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You, you've been praying for that thing. It has not changed. Can you try this one I'm showing you now? Seeing that when Jesus began to speak to this woman, he said something that I don't have time to push hard on. He says, if you knew, oh, glory be to God. <laughs> if you knew who is this person before you, you would have asked him. This hour is the hour where God we teach you what to ask him. <laughs> there are people who have to ask God and keep asking God. There are people that God will bring a prayer request to them. If you don't believe me, ask Solomon. You know, Solomon did not ask for wisdom. No. He asked for wisdom for the people. Amen? He said, give me wisdom so that I can govern your people right. He wasn't asking wisdom for himself. No. He said, I need it for your people. When you put people first, oh goodness, you have reached God. When you put people first, you have reached God. Amen? Hallelujah. Just know that you are putting people first. It will shock you how God will solve. When Solomon put people first, God said, oh, when you put people first, you don't have to ask for riches. When you put people first, because I know you'll be putting people first, you can't die prematurely. He says, I will give you long life. Glory be to God. That means when you spend time praying this prayer, you'll be amazed at how God will be fighting battles on your behalf. Can we rise? Am I preaching to mature Christian or you want me to just preach? The Lord will bless you. The Lord will give you food. The Lord will do. Please. Do, do, do you know what I'm saying now? Now, finally, this sixth hour is the noonday, right? This is the one that I know many of you will like. <laughs> the sixth hour is the noonday. And the noonday, the Bible reveals that it's an enemy that is operating at that time. <laughs> the 
The noonday enemy is the most terrible enemy. And that is the scripture that Satan himself, when he was tempting Jesus, he went to Psalm 91. Because Satan knows what he does at the noonday. Psalm 91 verse 6. The noonday enemy. The noonday enemy is the enemy that cuts your process, cuts your progress, cuts your success at noonday. Somebody say, I will not stop at the noonday. Uh -huh. He says that there that, that, that are troubles and destructions. He says, no of the pestilence that walks in darkness, no of the destruction that lays waste. Whatever has been wasting my life in the middle of my time, whatever is seeking to waste me in the middle of it, I am just gaining momentum. I'm just trying to advance this business, this career, and that enemy that comes at the noonday. He says, at noonday, you must understand there's a devil that does not want you to go into the evening. God's plan is that when the sun rises, you should get to the evening. God's plan is that when you start anything, you should finish well. That when you begin anything, he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the ending, but there's a devil that wants to terminate the process in the afternoon. Every devil that is seeking to abort your destiny, abort your possibilities, the things that God has begun. You see, there is nothing as frustrating as starting something, putting all your weight on it, and when it's supposed to produce the result, then something cut it short. Whatever has been cutting short that dream, please, the noonday is the time to pray against those forces. But guess what? Psalm 91 is not for everybody. It's for those who abide in the secret place of the Most High. It is in your abiding in the secret place of the Most High. The Bible says, because he has set his love upon me, oh, I will deliver him and I will honor him because when you abide, you will love him. There is something that when you spend time with somebody, even though you didn't like their nose before, all of a sudden, their nose becomes a pointing nose. <laughs> Amen. When you spend time, I'm telling you, when you spend time with somebody, you keep spending time. You can't spend time with God and not love him. No, you will love him. When you are reading that Bible, there are scriptures that we just want you like, wow, I can't wait to meet this being. What kind of a being is this that knows everything? What kind of a being is this that says, though you pass through the fire, I will be with you. He lost me like that. I got to love him back. There is something the word of God will do. So, in the noontime, don't just pray for souls to be won. Pray against every demonic force that wants to end my life at the prime of my life. That wants to end my business at the prime of it. That wants to end my career at the prime of it. That wants to stop that relationship at the prime of it. There are forces. The Bible says it. And if you are wise, the Bible says you are wise for yourself. Is anybody wise today? Be wise to win souls. Be wise to pray. The prayer that brings people to the kingdom of God. I'm going to encourage you thus. Write down names of, you don't need to write them. They're in your phone. You already have them. They're in your contact. You know them. You know. Every time, some of them is when you are in church, they are calling you. You know that they didn't go to church. Amen? Okay, when you come back from church, and you too say, well, when I close from church, I'll come and see you. And you close from church to go and meet them sitting at home. No, we have to rise to another level. Amen? So the sixth hour is for what? Praying God's prayer request. And then stopping the waster.
that waste at noon day. Are you still here? Glory be to God. Can you put your hands together? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.